In the next half hour of business life, Ghana bags a little above $731 million from oil production for the first half of this year. But Public Interest and Accountability Committee expresses worry over missing cash from GNPC's oil liftings. I'm saying that this purpose should come and register any money they generate because it's a petroleum revenue. It should pass through uh, that's, uh, the holding fund, petroleum holding fund, before if they want the money back, it should be allocated from petroleum holding fund. Ahead will engage Vice President of PIAC for more on this. Also fight against climate change, President Akufado to launch the National Energy Transition Plan in November, a move with the ultimate aim of shifting from use of fossil fuel to renewable energy sources. This is just not sustainable. And, you know, the Plus warning of further downgrade from other rating agencies if Ghana continues to service its debt with about 70% of revenue collected. This is just not sustainable. And, you know, the rating agencies realized that this was not stopping and it was increasing. We have to have the, the, the very strong source. Hello and welcome once again. Now let's take a look at the details. Ghana earned approximately $732 million from oil production for the first half of this year. This amount is from three fields, namely Jubilee, 10 and Sankofa Jinyami fields, and also comprises royalties, tax payments and surface rentals. Now this pushed up revenues generated from the sector to about $8.9 billion since 2011 when petroleum production commenced in Ghana. The following report has more. According to the semi-annual report of the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, PIAC, the amount excludes an oil lifting that was done by a subsidiary of the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, Jubilee Oil Holding Limited, which acquired an Adakun last year. Speaking to some journalists ahead of the launch of the report, Chairman of PIAC, Professor Kwame Adum Frimpon, expressed worry that the company is not registered in Ghana and recommended an immediate action by the GNPC to get it registered. At the UHL, uh, is a foreign company. It's a foreign company, but subsidiary to GMPC. Once a subsidiary to GMPC, they should be registered in Ghana, because GMPC is wholly owned by Ghanaians. And you cannot say that your 100% subsidiary is a foreign. That it's not done. So we are saying that this people should come and register any money they generate, because it's a petroleum revenue, it should pass through uh, that's, uh, the holding fund, petroleum holding fund, before if they want the money back, it should be allocated from petroleum holding fund. That is our uh, issue. So the money should come and be put into the petroleum fund, because the subsidiary, 100% subsidiary of GMPC, and GMPC is 100% owned by Ghanaians. The report also revealed that there has been a decline in net returns of petroleum revenues that were invested offshore. The committee used the occasion to call on the Ministry of Finance and the Investment Advisory Board to collaborate in finding other favorable markets to invest the country's oil resources rather than only the U.S. market. Here is Professor Adum Frimpong again. We have Ghana uh, Investment Advisory. Yeah. You see, you don't, we don't want to... Exactly. And take somebody's position. So we are saying that one that one is not yielding a maximum interest, they should heed to the advice of what? The committee. There's a committee just like Fiac, I mentioned that. So they should collaborate with them and then take alternative. The District Assembly's Common Fund received no transfer from the annual budget funding amount during the first half of the year. Now joining us by Zoom to speak further on the issue is Vice Chairman for the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, Sir Alpha Mohammed. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. First off, take us back to how GMPC acquired the stake in Anadako. It looks like we have lost uh, Nasser there, but when we get him, we'll try and bring the conversation back. But let's move on and do some other stories. The Institute for Fiscal Studies is warning that more rating agencies will further downgrade Ghana's credit rating if the country continues to service its debt with about 70% of its revenue collection. 
Fitch last Friday downgraded the country to junk status, a situation President Takufado has lamented is deteriorating the economic recovery plans of developing countries like Ghana. Speaking to Joy Business, a senior fellow of the IFS, Dr. Said Bwache, warned that rating agencies will further downgrade the country if it continues to struggle to pay its debts. You know, uh, the business plan was analyzing. The country takes about 70% of all the revenues it collects to settle debt, you know, debt repayment, including amortization and interest. This is just not sustainable. And, you know, the rating agencies realized that this was not stopping and it was increasing with increased borrowing. And that's why they downgraded our credit. So about two, three years ago, even though there was stability, I in particular was saying it was just being artificially manipulated through continuous borrowing and there was going to be a crash. So thinking that you can get back to normal with market correction itself is not going to be easy. We have to have a, a very strong source of foreign exchange inflow. We take you back to our initial story. So joining us via Zoom to speak further on the issue is Vice Chairman for the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, Nasser Alpha Mohammed. Thank you so much uh, for joining us once again. First off, take us back to how GMPC acquired the stake in Anadako. Um, thank you so much uh, for having me and good evening to our viewers. Um, well, we all know that um, oil companies are able to have their stakes in this country um, through negotiated agreements in the past. Um, and Adapo was one such um, oil company, uh, which was a JV partner for our oil blocks in this country. So at a point where they wanted to exit this country, uh, they advertised for sale of um, their equity uh, interest in um, TEN and Jubilee. And so um, GMPC was interested in acquiring uh, part of that interest. So you'd realize that Cosmos acquired part of it and um, uh, GMPC wanted to acquire about, uh, also acquire about 7% of, of that. So actually what happened uh, was that uh, GMPC um, um, decided to hold on to the special purpose vehicle that was created by Anadarko itself to hold um, the equity interest, the 7% equity interest uh, for GMPC subject to um, a transfer to any of the subsidiaries of GMPC that GMPC wanted actually um, transfer that uh, equity holdings to. But the company that currently holds that 7% is the JHOL, which is the Jubilee Holding Oil uh, Limited. What it was was this, because Anadarko held a commercial interest, the idea from the GMPC perspective was that um, it had to, even if Ghana is buying that interest, it had to be a commercial interest, um, something that eventually will not be subject to um, uh, its proceeds being paid to the Petroleum Holding Fund. And then we took a different uh, perspective to that. But uh, GNPC had advanced, money's advanced from the government of the Republic of Ghana to enable it to purchase that 7% uh, interest. And having purchased that 7% interest, we did our initial um, assessment of the entire project. And we thought that um, we had GNPC Exploco which originally GNPC itself indicated to us would have been the, the subsidiary that would be holding the 7% interest. And then they informed us that the JOHL is just a special purpose vehicle and that later the uh, interest that it holds will be ceded to a GNPC explore. That has not happened as of now and JOHL has uh, proceeded to lift uh, uh, you know, crude oil this first half 2022. And so the issue around this is actually uh, whether or not the proceeds from this lifting should be paid into the Petroleum Holding Fund or not. Pierre is of the opinion that uh, if you look at uh, Sections 3 and Section 7 of the Petroleum Revenue Management Act, it is clear that all, uh, you know, uh, petroleum uh, all participation 
by the Republic of Ghana, whether directly or indirectly in petroleum activities in this country, including even the carried and participating interest, which is one of the sources of petroleum revenue, should be paid directly into the petroleum revenue, uh, into the petroleum holding fund. So Pierre is of the opinion that even if you think that this is a commercial transaction and that uh, it is an indirect participation of the state in that transaction, we are still of the opinion that proceeds from that uh, transaction should actually first be paid into the petroleum holding fund. And if later uh, we have disbursement that goes to GNPC or to any other of its subsidiary um, uh, from the PHL, that will be another issue for us to discuss. So we are firmly of the opinion that this is revenue for petroleum revenue for the state, which should have been paid into the petroleum revenue, uh, into the petroleum holding fund. At the moment, uh, that is not the case. But what response were you giving on the first oil lift in cash? Um, we have already um, indicated, like JOHL, for example, lifted about uh, in excess of 944 uh, 1,164 barrels of crude oil in the first half of 2022. And uh, that gave us a return in terms of uh, revenue of uh, in excess of 100 million uh, United States dollars. So it's actually 100 million, 748,907.95 million dollars. Now, the proceeds, these proceeds were not paid uh, into the petroleum uh, holding fund. And GNPC's response, as I've indicated, is that this is a purely commercial transaction. Uh, they have indicated that they have sought the opinion of the Attorney General in respect of whether or not uh, the, co um, the commercial vehicle they have created, which is the uh, GOHL, uh, would be an appropriate one in the way and manner they have proceeded to handle it at the moment. We have looked at the the uh, opinion of the Attorney General, and why, uh, while we do not impugn uh, that opinion, uh, PIAC is of the same opinion that the proceeds from the left end actually constitute petroleum revenue um, for the state and ought to have been paid to, uh, into the petroleum holding fund. If you look at uh, Section 7 of the PRMA, there is no difficulty in getting uh, clarity in respect of that particular provision, that petroleum uh, uh, participation by the government of Ghana through all the revenue uh, uh, sources, whether in respect of carried and participating interest, in respect of um, um, uh, royalty, in respect of um, any of the sources of petroleum revenue, should first be paid into the um, petroleum um, holding fund. Mm. We are convinced in our minds as a committee that this is one of those instances where petroleum, where the proceeds of the lifting ought to have been paid into the petroleum holding fund first, and then any other disbursements can then take effect from there. Now, sir, what action do you want government to take on this matter? Yeah, there are a couple of issues that uh, we are actually uh, looking at. You see. When GOHL, I mean, to the extent that GOHL as a, a company has now uh, started lifting, the um, Petroleum Exploration and Production Act, Act 919, requires that where an entity takes part in the uh, upstream petroleum activities in this country, it ought to be registered in the country itself, and that is Ghana. Of course, in the first half of the year, between January and uh, June uh, 2022, uh, we realized that there were checks that GOHL was not a registered company in Ghana. Of course, GNPC had already indicated to us that um, it is an external company registered in Cayman Islands, uh, and that is because it was originally registered by Anadaku as a special purpose bank in that jurisdiction. But then the question is, if the company was to travel all this far uh, to be able to um, lift oil, participate in upstream petroleum activities, then the right things uh, ought to have been done. We are having information that uh, post the time period for our reporting, which is after June this year, it appears 
that uh, it has been registered in Ghana as an external company, okay. you know, and, and that is fine. But within the period it lifted, there was no registration. And we thought uh, that was an issue. But the registration bit is not even the most important one. What is so important to us is that because we are a public oversight body that should go after every um, dollar, every petrol dollar that is due to the Republic of Ghana. We thought that to the extent that the law is clear that these revenues, whether through indirect participation or direct participation, should first be paid into the Petroleum Holding Fund or to have come to the Petroleum Holding Fund first before mm. any further disbursements out of the Petroleum Holding Fund, either GMPC or any of its subsidiaries or to any of the other entities that the law prescribes um, revenue should be disbursed to. So that has been our position uh, so far as this particular matter is concerned. Mm. Let me understand, what other striking revelations can we find in the report for the first half of the year? And what is PIAC's recommendation? Well, there's uh, a very an important related matter has to do with the capital gains taxation uh, of this particular transaction we are talking about. Um, we are of the opinion that um, uh, it's, it's even the law. It is the law that once you have uh, this kind of transaction where you transfer the, your equity interest to another uh, company or entity, then it is important for the Ghana Revenue Authority to assess you know, the transaction and ascertain whether or not there is any capital gains due to the Republic of Ghana. Now, the, our, uh, you know, when we looked at all the data and all the questions we had asked, um, it came back that there was no assessment um, on the issue of capital gains in respect of this same transaction. And so we wrote to GRA and we also wrote to the Ministry of Finance and we have responses from both entities. In respect of the Ghana Revenue Authority, they tell us that the whole transaction was exclusively handled by the Ministry of Finance and that if you wanted to know about uh, more about whether or not capital gains was due, then we should uh, go to the Ministry of Finance for answers. Then the Ministry of Finance also got back to us, indicating that um, uh, we should go to the uh, Ghana Revenue Authority as the sole body uh, responsible for assessing and collecting uh, revenue. So at the moment, this is where we are. And these were the responses we had just before we published our report. And so if there are additional explanations to this, mm. I'm sure both the Ghana Revenue Authority and the Ministry of Finance may give us additional explanation as to why capital um, against tax was not assessed. And because the assessment is the most important thing. If you assess and capital gains is due, then we can talk about the collective. And if you assess and there is no capital gains, but we will understand that you have assessed and realize that there, there was no capital gain. But here is a case the assessment itself was not done at all. Mm. We we'll leave it here. Nazir, thank you so much for your time. We are pressed with time. We'll bring you uh, more details as and when the story develops here on Join News Channel. Nazir Alpha Mohammed is the vice chairman of PIAC. We take a quick break here. We'll return with more. Do stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. Now, Silver Star Auto Limited is calling for more collaborations from stakeholders and its consumers to continue to expand the operations of the company. This comes after the automotive company announced that it is no longer the authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer in Ghana. According to its chief executive officer, Assad Nazil, the company has forged various partnerships with other automotive companies across the world. He was speaking at a press briefing. The company said it will continue to make investment in new brands, facilities, human resources, and training to continue serving its customers to the highest standard they deserve. Assad Nazil indicated that the company is open to better clarification by its customers on the operations of the company. Yes, we're concerned, but going forward, we are going to continue being the leader for Mercedes-Benz, and we are continuing to offer the best after-sales service that Ghana can offer. Yes, we have our challenges. We are not perfect. But we do have the experience where the new dealer from the press release I've seen, their, their after-sales facility is not even ready. So what are customers supposed to do? Our hard 
the customers that we have worked hard to get, the customers we have gone to golf clubs and weddings and funerals and offices and my team, our team has gone prospecting and done uh, activations and done billboards. Now they finally bought from us and according to the press release we've had the after sales service for the new dealer, it's not even ready. What are, what are our customers supposed to do? So we want to assure our customers, we are your champions. We appreciate you. We will look after you. We'll do our very best to continue looking after you. Executive Director for Silver Star Auto Limited, Nuhar Kaumoni, called for laws to support the local automobile industry. Thing contradicts with any local laws. Okay? And this is where you have the chance to say that... Uh, Basically, okay, this contradicts, this contradicts, and I need to make some amendments. And unfortunately, Ghana does not have any such laws that protect uh, trading companies. They do exist, like uh, Mr. Assad said, for the mining industry and for oil and gas. But in the trading industry, if I am now today distributor, maybe some new laws will say that if this distributorship has been in Ghana and it's changing hands, what are the reasons uh, it's happening? Because it's a local company, it's uh, creating local employment, it's creating uh, local income, paying taxes, and so forth. Meanwhile, a multinational, no matter how long they have been in Ghana, I can put it as my headline, a 113-year-old company, Ghanaian company, but I'm a foreign uh, multinational. Everything I do and I earn, I'm repatriating abroad. So you can't tell me you are the same as a local company even if you've been here a thousand years. And that's how we end business live here on the Joy News channel. Thank you so much for your time. For more news, do log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. My name is Beverly Broom. Enjoy the rest of our program.